and welcome to Neighbors and Friends. Today we have three guests from 100 Grannies. They have a new cap available. Uh, check over at the Episcopal Church and uh, get your own cap. <laughs> you have to join first. You have to join and be a granny. Yeah. And Not the church. You don't have to <laughs> you don't have join to 100 join. Grannies. For a just join community. the Grannies. Yeah. And you don't have to be a granny, uh, whether you've had children or not, if you care about planet Earth. Correct. Which we often call our mother. We live here. Right. So we have with us today Becky. Ross. Ross. Mm -hmm. And Ann Christensen. Right. And Becky Hall. And they're going to tell us about their experience with a problem with fracking for people who think that they could get along without drinking water and prefer to get oil. <laughs> Would you tell us, Anne, something about the program? Well, 100 Grand is, is uh, just over a year old, <clears throat> and it's a group of older women who are concerned about the future of the earth for their grandchildren and there are a lot of issues that fall under that umbrella. Um, we are a growing organization. There's always room for more. It's, uh, it's not a big obligation if you're a member. Uh, your, your moral support is important. You don't have to give a lot of time unless you want to. We do a lot of, of um, affairs, environmental affairs, uh, the art festival. Uh, Becky, you could probably talk more about where we, where we show up to meet people and talk about the problems of Mother Earth. And uh, some of us are more involved than others, but, um, but you're, anyone's, uh, anyone can join and show that they are concerned too, and will do what they can to as little as write a letter to their congressman or talk to their neighbor. Um, not a lot is required, but um, but we're trying to make a difference. And in in Iowa City, in Johnson County, Becky Ross is working diligently and making progress in getting plastic bags banned. Um, this is not a new idea by any means. A lot of cities around the world have done it. Some states are looking at doing it statewide. We were hoping eventually Iowa will. <laughs> Right now, we're, we're just looking at Johnson County, and, and now we're beginning to look at Lynn County. And then uh, the fracking problem is uh, something that we really need to get on fast. If you're not familiar with fracking, it's a way of pressuring oil out of the ground, out of the rocks. It's not your old Texas spindle top gusher kind of oil. It is extremely dirty oil. It's very polluting. It takes <clears throat> three gallons of water to get one gallon of water, uh, I'm sorry, barrels of water to get one barrel of, of uh, crude oil. People who live in the area where, where this is done have a spike in serious illnesses such as cancer, leukemia, which is a form of cancer, asthma, all kinds of illnesses. It's, uh, it's using water that we are quickly running out of. Um, I don't see how anybody in good conscience could be for fracking mm -hmm. with what kind of water it uses, let alone the illnesses it causes and the problems. Right. I understand it. It <laughs> takes millions of, of gallons uh, just to force that sand yes. down into the... Right. And, and in addition to the water, they put chemicals in it that, that the companies will not divulge what those chemicals are. So we are polluting our aquifers, we are polluting our streams with this unknown substance. And in, <coughs> um, I think most people were aware last May of the, of the leak in Arkansas, in the community in Arkansas, that uh, I think uh, affected many, many families, uh, killed a lot of wildlife. Yeah. These leaks 
are usually in unpopulated places, so we don't hear about them so much, but the United States has an average of 300 and some oil pipe leaks every year, you know, more than one a day. And we don't hear about them because they're in the wilderness or unpopulated areas. And it's difficult to clean that up because, first of all, there are chemicals that we don't even have the names of the chemicals. Mm -hmm. But it's difficult to clean up a, a, something you don't know what it is. That's right. It's impossible. And this, this stuff is so heavy, so dense, that it sinks to the bottom of waterways. And it can't be... Um, can't be skimmed it, off. It can't, no, it can't be skimmed off. There was a leak in the Kalamazoo uh, River near Kalamazoo, obviously, uh, what, three, three and a half years ago. And the company that owned the pipeline has spent something like three billion dollars to clean it up, and it's still not clean. It's still not usable for swimming or fishing or recreation. Well, my guess is that three billion dollars could have developed a lot of alternative energy. You are so right, Elsie. <laughs> you are so right. We have got to put a stop to fracking. We have got to get off fossil fuels. Everybody keeps looking for other ways to get oil out of the ground or gas out of the ground. But that's, we can't do that anymore. We have to use alternatives. And we've got the technology. We've got the alternatives. There's one town just outside of Iowa City that's developing, uh, I think, solar power mm -hmm. for their small energy company. Yes. Uh, I think that's uh, d down by Frytown. Mm -hmm. Yes, Frytown. Uh -huh. They are, and that's wonderful. I wish Iowa City would get on the bandwagon. Right. And then uh, Becky is our education person and has done a lot of educating of both adults and kids, school kids. And you want to talk about the lecture series next month? Oh, yes, we have a lecture series coming up starting February. It's going to be Mondays here at the Senior Center. And I should have the brochure up here so I can get all the information correct. But every Monday, 6 o'clock in February, well, um, on President's Day, it's, we moved it to the first Monday in March. And uh, we have two university professors, and we have one congressman, Rob Hogue, and we have one um, CEO of a company that's doing great things. There are some great things happening out there. We need to kind of shift in that direction. But yeah, that lecture series will be right here at the Senior Center. Um, there's going to be posters up. We're going to get some advertising out. So we want to get as many people. It's public. It's not it's just public, for members. Open of the exactly. Not just senior center people. Anybody can come, and we're really going to spread free. the word on that. Mm -hmm. And it's free. It's important. <laughs> and, yeah. And they, there are going to be some really good lectures. Um, so With discussion. With discussion at the end, definitely. And then the movie series you should talk about. We finished our movies. We had two movie series. The last one was in September at, here again at the Senior Center. And they were very successful, too. And, and a gas land about the fracking that's going on, uh, educational great movies with good discussion too so those are some some but educational are you planning another film series we haven't started fall? talking about it yet but mm -hmm. i think september seemed to be a good time yeah. to do that so hopefully we'll have another one going and then in the summer we we enjoy having a table at the arts fest and the jazz fest so look for us at those and uh, that's just a good time to kind of get some information out and uh, we usually have reusable bags that the children enjoy coloring while we talk to parents about it. But we've had lots of support, and um, you know, kids get it, and their parents get it now too. So we just want to keep that information out there and have lots of ground root support. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe you, Becky, would. Well, that bring the yeah. reusable bags that we yeah. hand out uh, brings us back to the subject of plastic and how we're. Plastic is also uh, polluting our earth, yes. our oceans, and um, we, if you think about it, if you go to in, in any store, everything is packaged in plastic. I mm -hmm. mean, from, I said, from grapes to furniture. I mean, it's just everything. And, and plastic is a petroleum product. And it's made out of petroleum, and it is, it's, it's hard, it's going to be hard to really 
not use so much plastic, but I'm really personally trying to make better consumer choices and we're trying to educate people. I don't think people think about it that much. Yeah. So that's what we're trying to do is educate people and, and if we could get the stores to not just hand out all these free plastic bags and people would start taking their own bags, that would that's it. We in the US we use something like uh, well, a trillion plastic bags are used worldwide wide, annually. A trillion plastic bags. They get used for about an average of 12 minutes. And I don't think anybody can even envision what one trillion No, means. I mean, it's like... But, and only about 1 to 3 percent get recycled. And recycling is really not the answer either, because it, they really don't get recycled. Most, a little bit might go back into bags, but some of it goes back into what it's called downcycling, more into carpet or um, what are those like decking materials? You can make park benches out of them and things, and that's good. I, but we just need to quit using so much plastic that is unnecessary, like the plastic bags. I mean, we could get along just fine without them. So, right here in town, uh, the uh, new Pioneer Co-op has people use paper bags. Yeah. And, and they're very reusable, they're yeah. very sturdy. But paper's really not completely the answer either, if everybody would just use their own reuse, you know, cloth bag. Because um, paper, it does come from trees, and we need our trees too. We, so our trees. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to use up all our trees on paper bags, but... Um, Which reminds me that one of the problems of fracking is in Canada, where they're doing so much fracking, whole forests have been destroyed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they are the living things that purify the air. Right. right. They give us Absolutely. oxygen. <laughs> and they store carbon. Yeah. So yeah. without the trees, we're going to be... <laughs> uh, can you tell us uh, how big that collection of plastic is out in the ocean? Well, <clears throat> there's a gyre in every ocean now. Um, and at the one in the Pacific, they have said, is at least the size of Texas, if not there, and growing, because everybody, I mean, we have a lot of plastic waste that doesn't get recycled. Um, <clears throat> and it, 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 we try to get it into the landfills, but even there, it doesn't... It blows it, away. It, well, and it doesn't decompose. The plastic bags do blow away because they're so lightweight. Uh, our own landfill, um, they have people, they hire people on a daily basis to go pick up paper and plastic that's blowing away. <laughs> so we really need to just, I mean, it, to me, it's such a no-brainer. Right. You know, it's something we could really do without. And there are uh, any number of uh, animal life, uh, they eat that stupid uh, plastic bag. Which is full of chemicals. And they and get caught in it, or they eat it, and, yeah. and, and die. A lot of the sea life uh, that washes on shore that's dead is full of plastic. Mm -hmm. And that's probably what killed them. You know, whales that are, I've heard, read things about being full of just big sheets of plastic, and you think, mm -hmm. how did that get out in the ocean? But mm -hmm. it blows around too, I guess. And so <coughs> what are our uh, plastic here in Johnson County? gets into the Ralston Creek, which gets into the Iowa River, which gets into the Mississippi, which goes down to the Gulf of Mexico, which is one of the worst dead zones in any of the oceans. Yeah. We're, we're all responsible. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, just, it's just appalling. It's, you know, I, I want to say this, Elsie. Uh, I don't know how many of your viewers know that you're a member of Grannies, of yes, 100 sir. Grannies. You want to talk a little bit about what it's meant to you? Well, uh, I am a grandmother. I have uh, four children, six grandchildren, and uh, seven great-grandchildren. Wow. And life goes on. <laughs> well, that's it. We hope life will go on. And we, yes, we hope there will be a planet here fit for them to live on. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. And one of, the, one of the things I think about being in this group is that you're with like-minded people and it makes you feel a little bit more powerful mm -hmm. when you think about, well, I can do this and I can do, you know, I cannot 
used plastic bags myself, but what, what's that little fiddly amount going to do? So if you get into a group of people that are, you, you feel like you have a little bit more impact. And the hundred grannies, uh, a lot of women like to be in, in groups with other women. There are a number of great environmental groups in yes. this city, just, just in Iowa City alone. And well, many of us belong to more than one. Oh, yes. But if, you, if you're more comfortable in a women's group where you can speak up and, and be acknowledged more comfortably, a uh, hundred grannies is, is for you. Yeah. <laughs> and you and you and you. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I want to point out our water here. Uh, planet Earth has a certain amount of water on it. And we've already used up way too much. And the fracking is going to just use enormous amounts, which will be full of the poisons that are not named. And we might end up with uh, hardly anything. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't envision drinking a cup of oil. Yeah. I want a good glass of, of, of water. Clean water. Would you tell us what your, uh, was it your grandchild said about the water? Oh, well, he said, but Grandma, there's always the same amount of water on the earth. It takes different forms, a gas or frozen, and it's always there. But I said, but the clean water is not always going to be there unless we're careful. And, and just like the Ogallala Aquifer, I mean, that I think they say has maybe 30 more years. And if we're pumping the water out of that for the fracking and the, that's going uh, that they want to have go on, uh, it's going to go a lot faster than that. And that's what the farmers in Nebraska use. And, and that's why some of us went over to help in Nebraska uh, last September when they, they needed some help because um, they were planning on putting the tar sands pipeline through Nebraska. It hasn't happened yet, but we're we're all, we're supporting our neighbors too because um, we, we're all in this together. I mean, if it affects them, it affects us. We're well, tell us about the barn in Nebraska. Oh, okay. well, we have a picture right here. It was a a barn that w actually all of us went, and we had some other grannies too. I think there were about six grannies all together that went to Nebraska in September, and. Um, Jane Cleb uh, is the head of Bold Nebraska, and she was she's a great organizer and really got a lot of support. I think there were there were other people from out of state too, and mm -hmm. it was at the time right uh, when they were having the flood in Boulder. But we there were some people from Colorado that came over too, um, and uh, they put it on a particular place, a particular farm, because that was where the pipeline was planning to go through. And there is a law that if there is a structure there, they can't put that. And this property is owned by, uh, it's quite extensive by the same family. So um, it's not a large barn, but it's, it's uh, they're going to use it for meetings, for environmental meetings. And I don't know if other meetings or education educational kids. meetings. Yeah, I think they've had field trips out there, but they did put solar panels on it. Yes. And they have a windmill that to power it. You can kind of see a picture of it right there. and. Um, so Anne stayed a little bit longer than we did. She actually got to work on the barn. A lot of us worked on uh, big posters and billboards that are going to be put along that proposed pipeline. But we sure hope uh, it doesn't go in because we we have over 3,000 gigatons of fossil fuels ready to burn. But we if we burn those, we're toast. <laughs> the most we can burn, and I wrote, is, is 600 gigatons, which is a lot less. So we really shouldn't be going, like Ann said before, after these fossil fuels because we, we really can't burn them. We uh, can't go more than two degrees Celsius to have major, major problems. And this is not in Iowa, but it's a picture. One is Wisconsin and one is Minnesota. They're already there. But Iowa has this same silica sand that is needed for fracking. We don't, we don't, we aren't probably aren't going to be fracked until the last ounce is pulled out of the rocks. But but we have the sand they need. And uh, Alamee County, the very northeast corner of Iowa, has put a moratorium on sand mining. But the, but the state, the governor, is in favor of it. And, and some of the legislators. If 
Or it's jobs, you know. Oh, well, yes, but it isn't because most of those jobs are truck drivers who come from out of state. Um, the trucks are enormous, carrying sand, beating up the highways, ruining farms, and if people are familiar with Alameda County, it's, it's a very heavily used uh, recreational area on the Mississippi uh, with bluffs and uh, rolling uh, landscape, very popular with hunters and fishers, trout streams. Um, this threatens to destroy all that. We'll lose more jobs than we'll gain. And we will wreck the tourism industry in these small towns. So we need to write to our legislators. Absolutely. And, 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 gonna, and tell them, <clears throat> stop the taking away of our sand. Yeah, yeah. And they're going to be discussing this in the in the uh, session that starts next next week. Wow. It's next week, and then in two weeks, not quite two weeks. Um, the, yeah, that's one of the most important things you can do is talk to your legislator or your state senator about a fracking and about um, plastics and about any environmental issues. Uh, a lot of this falls on deaf ears in the legislature and, or, and uh, we're fighting with the Farm Bureau that uh, boosts the farmers and it's not that we're against farmers, not against farming, but we have to be Excuse me, we have to think of how to farm in an environmentally sustainable way. And it's possible. Well, a few years, a couple of years ago, I saw a picture in the Des Moines Register, and corn plants were literally falling into a nearby stream. My dad and my uncle would never have farmed that close to any, yeah. any stream. Right, right. That is not good farming practice. No, especially with all the chemicals that they put on. We need to have that buffer zone. And, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I hear they're over planting too in some of the wetlands because of ethanol. They want that more money mm -hmm. for ethanol. Yeah. And ethanol also uses a ton of water and that's right. To to produce the eth ethanol. So right, right. And it takes a whole lot of gas. Uh, to drive the tractors that get the crop that right. they make yeah. ethanol out of. Yeah, so it, it, so it almost uses more energy than it is making. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a not a really good thing to do. Mm -hmm. Another thing that people bring up is that, <coughs> that we, we need to become environmentally self-sustaining mm -hmm. and that if we don't get this oil out of the ground, we can't be. But this oil doesn't stay in the United States. It goes to the highest bidder. And the highest bidder is usually Europe and China, and to some extent, South America. We're, we're sending, they're, they're trying to build this Keystone XL pipeline to go from Alberta, northern Alberta, Canada, to Port Arthur, Texas, which is a tax-free zone <laughs> with, with um, refineries that people live close to that is making them sick. And then they're, then they're bidding out the oil and shipping it off. This is not going to help the U.S. at all. The only thing that we're going to be able to do is to save energy, which is the most, the best thing you can do, and to get onto alternative energies and not rely on fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. And they also say, well, the, as you brought up, the pipeline's going to give jobs. Well, it doesn't give that many jobs, and they aren't permanent jobs. It's and they, many of them come from out of out of state. The Marcellus shale that's being fracked in North Dakota. People are swarming to that town, to the nearby towns. There's no housing for the residents who were already there. Now they can't afford apartments and things because there's not enough housing. With with this, it's a boom town, and it's not. But it's not going to last. And uh, something's got to be done. Education to help people understand the dreadful danger of the wasteful use of water and the induction of poisons that cannot be cleaned out of the water, the soil. Uh, education.
We haven't mentioned coal, but we, yeah. we know that that's a, a problem too. And, uh, that's another yeah. biggie. But yeah. that coal is a fossil fuel. Mm -hmm. right. And they're blasting the tops <coughs> off of mountains right. mm -hmm. and ruining. Uh, you cannot replace that um, whatever topsoil there was. You can't replace you can't that replace mountain. a mountain. No. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's uh, uh, you. You get coal trains, and you've seen them back yeah. out in Wyoming, mm -hmm. uh, a mile long, literally a mile long. Mm -hmm. They come through Iowa. Uh, they come through most states from here west. Go to Illinois. Um, and then again, they're shipping it overseas. I mean, it's it, going and to uh, Asia, yes, China. Yes. Well, and there was that train with many, many cars, mm -hmm. and the driver went too fast around a curve, mm -hmm. and and all those mm -hmm. carloads of, I think it was oil, mm -hmm. burst into That's flame. A couple right. times this has happened. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. it's not the answer to get more oil. It's no. just not the answer. We've got to change our way and get on solar, wind, hydro, there are all kinds of other technologies that will work for us. Well, like we were talking about these spills, the oil spills, there's a saying, um, something like, uh, if the, um, so a solar spill would just be a nice sunny day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. so, That's good. Uh, uh, Windmills, not oil spills. Yeah. That's another good one. This is a t-shirt I got in Nebraska, from right. Bowl, Nebraska. Right. <laughs> I like that one. I actually, we switched our energy and we're supposedly supposed to be getting, all, so I don't feel so bad on these cold days, you know, because we're supposed to be getting our wind, our energy mostly from wind, uh, so we're paying a little extra for that, but in our house I'm feeling, oh, we, we, you know, we haven't put up solar panels or anything, but I feel like, well, my energy is coming mostly from wind, so. I'll pay a little extra for that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's worth it because it doesn't destroy anything. Exactly. I feel it's like poison I'm not. keeping warm, but I'm not, yeah. You're not poisoning the water exactly. supply? Exactly. Those windmills are going even with the polar vortex, maybe a little faster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, goodness. Well, thank you, ladies, for sharing the information. Can we add one more thing? Because this is kind of an important thing that's going to happen March 1st, and there's a few grannies involved. This is the Great Climate March, and it starts in Los Angeles, or in California, near Los Angeles, March 1st. And Miriam, Miriam, Kasia, Kasia uh, one of our grannies, is hoping to do the whole march to Washington, D.C., which ends November 1st. And we have a few other, it's coming through Iowa City, August 20th. Our studio group, uh, August 20th? August 20th is the date they're planning on being coming okay. through Iowa City, so. Well, we're going to interview uh, oh, um, Marsha, and, and that will be on uh, Channel 4 as well Great. as our program. Uh -huh. So, we hope that you have a good time. We will talk with you after you've done that, <laughs> and have a report. Thank, Thank you. you so much.